we're going to create a timeline. We can create a timeline a few different ways. We can go down here, right next to the folder icon, it says new item, we can click on that and then click on sequence and that will open up this window. Or what we can do is we can right click and then click on new item and sequence, whichever way works for you. There are a lot of sequence presets right here. So I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to hit okay. And now as you can see right here, a timeline has been created. Now, what if you have no idea about any of the, the stuff that I just talked about? I'm just filming videos on my phone. Like what do I do? That is where the list view comes in. For example, let me open up the A roll folder and then go to list view because here is the metadata that I talked about earlier. So here you can see the frame rate and again, you can see the aspect ratio if you want. But something that's really, really useful is if you right click on it and then click on new sequence from clip. Now it matches exactly that clip that we have created the sequence from. So this is a really great way of starting out. If you don't know anything about frame rates, if that's just like way above you right now or way over your head, that is totally fine. This is a good way to go as well. Okay. So with our a roll, what we can do is we can double click on it to open it up in the source monitor. I hope that it all starts making a little bit more sense now. So what we can do is we can just play through this with this little playhead right here. We can scrub through it, but when it comes to a roll and audio, I really prefer to edit that on my timeline. So that is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to show you why and how in a second. The first thing that we're going to do is we need to get this video onto our timeline. So one thing that you can do is you can drag and drop it right onto your timeline by like so, or there is a little shortcut for it if you want to know a shortcut, and that is the comma for inserting videos. And there is a shortcut that is for overriding clips, and that is the period shortcut. So now that we have our clip on our timeline, it's very small, but we can actually make this a lot bigger by using this right here, this bar. We can zoom in as you can see, or if you want to learn a shortcut, you could press the plus sign or the minus sign like so. So I'm just going to hit the plus sign. And as you can see, this is our video part. So anything visual will be placed on this part. And down here, this is our audio part. There's a really thick line right here. If you want, you can also drag that up or down. If you need some more space for your audio editing or for your video editing, you can just drag that up or down. I like to make these tracks bigger. So the way to do that is to hover over this line right here. And as you can see this icon, I don't know what the icon is called, but this one, this will appear and then and you can just drag it and you can also do the same for audio. So I'm just going to drag that down. So if I zoom in, what we can do is we can go right here to the razor tool, but as you can see, it also says C, which is uh, the shortcut for the razor tool. So I'm going to press C on my keyboard and then I'm going to make a cut right here. Then I'm going to press V, which is the selection tool, as you can see right here. I'm going to press V again to get my cursor back because if we still have C enabled, if we still have the razor tool enabled, we want to select this clip, right? Because now we need to delete this clip. If I accidentally click right here, I'm like, oh no, I, I didn't want to cut my video. What you can do is, let me now enable the selection tool by pressing V. We can either hit control Z or command Z if you're on a Mac to undo something. Or what you can do is you can click right here on this cut and you can press delete on your keyboard and that will remove the cut. So if you accidentally cut your footage, then you can just delete the cut or undo it by pressing control Z or command Z on your keyboard. So now what we have to do is we need to click on this, delete it and move this one forward. But what if I told you if there is an easier way, let me just undo that by hitting control Z a few times. What if I told you that there is a way easier way of doing this? And that is by ripple deleting something. When you ripple delete something, I can explain it, but I can also just show you what we can do is we can click on this right click and then click on ripple delete right here. Or I'm going to undo that again, control Z. What we can also do is we can click on this clip. We can hit shift and delete that will do the exact same thing. So if you're ready for that shortcut, it's shift delete both on windows and Mac, if I'm not mistaken. And what that does is it deletes the clip in front of it, the one that we have selected, and it will immediately move everything. In this case, it's just one clip, but usually it's everything. It will automatically move everything to the front. So it will close the gap. There is one more thing that we can do here. And that is, as you can see, there is a lot of nothing. We could either enable the razor tool again by pressing 
pressing C, or we can hover over it like so. You'll see this red bracket with an arrow and we can just drag that in. And now, as you can see, we have also cut something. So that is another way of cutting your video. 